Welcome to episode 239. On this installment of Book Chat, joining me are my three book bloggers, one series read-along co-host, Nicola and Casey. We're discussing Shadow and Bone, the first in the Grisha trilogy by Lee Bardugo. Stay tuned. Today's episode is brought to you by Audiobooks.com. New customers get one free audiobook when using our promo code AUDIOSHELF. You just need to enter the code AUDIOSHELF on the sign-up page, then click Apply, then fill out the rest of your account info. Support this podcast by using our code AUDIOSHELF and get your first audiobook free. Hey everyone, I'm your host, Tamara Ford, and welcome to Book Chat here on the Shelf Addiction Podcast. Join in this book discussion by finding me on Twitter as well as my book blogger co host. Tweet at us using our special hashtag, Three Bloggers One Series. That's using the numeric three and one. Again, that's hashtag Three Bloggers One Series. If Twitter isn't your thing, no worries. You can join us on the Facebook group, Shelf Addiction Official, and talk about the series with us there. I hope to hear your thoughts on this book discussion. The links for everything I've mentioned are below in the show notes. But before we jump into it, I have a quick note. I want to make sure that you get the full enjoyment out of this conversation, so I recommend that you read the book first. This is a book discussion after all, so spoiler alert, you've been warned. Welcome everyone. As I mentioned in the intro, we are starting a brand new trilogy today. We are talking about Shadow and Bone by Lee Bardugo. Joining me as always are my read-along co-hosts and friends, Nicola and Casey. I'm going to go ahead and let them introduce themselves. Casey, why don't you go first? Hi everybody, I'm Casey. I've been part of this podcast since the very beginning and I just love it. I hope you do too. I'm also a reviewer for Literary Escapism and an editor at Heart Full of Ink. Yay, welcome. Thanks. (laughs) Nicola? Hey, everybody. My name is Nicola. I've been blogging at uh, alphaheroes.net since 2007, so it's an ancient blog. Um, I've blogged a few other places around the the blogosphere since then, and uh, I'm the latest member of the podcast here but i i really enjoy it too and i hope everybody else does too yes welcome i'm so excited to talk to you guys about this book yeah i'm excited too yeah yes so before we jump in this is our very first time doing a young adult uh trilogy on this read-along journey please let us know if you enjoy this trilogy and if you want us to consider more young adult fiction you know fantasy fiction and future series conversations so just let us know or if you guys hate it and you're like don't ever do young adult again let us know that too (laughs) (laughs) all right where should we start there is so much to talk about there's so much world building going on so many words and names and where should we oh my god (laughs) can i apologize right now for not knowing russian and i will mispronounce everything (laughs) like I'm yes, sorry. I, I did. Think sorry, I, I think I'm we're going to be a trilogy of mispronouncers. Although I don't know that there's any words that I want to try to pronounce right off the top of the, right off the start. We'll just call them by English equivalents, maybe. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. That sounds like a good idea. <laughs> All right, well, let's start with the main character. Or I guess we can talk about some things we liked before we dive into things we didn't like. Because you know me, I got some on both sides <laughs> of the coin. I, I couldn't help it. So I really did like Elena. I liked her a lot, even though um, she had her moments, right? Mm -hmm. Overall, I liked her. And I liked that she had some girl power moments in addition to the stupidity, which (laughs) I loved. (laughs) Yeah, I liked that her power was actually directly um, correlated with her health. I thought that was interesting. I liked that about yes. the world building. Like she was kind of sickly and frail until she started learning how to uh, use the power that she had. And uh, I didn't totally understand. I mean, I did, but why she had it sort of bottled up, but um, it was a little, it, you know, the explanation for how she accessed it in the end was, um, I don't know if I if I bought into that. What did you guys think about it? Well, I thought 
it, okay, so the way I took it as she was holding her power down because she didn't want to be different from Mal. You know, mm-hmm. she wanted to be with him. She wanted to, you know, stay with him. So she purposefully kind of stuffed it down. And it finally erupted when she kind of let go of him, when she was like, well, you know, that's not going to work out. I just have to accept who I am. And instantly her body mm-hmm. got better. Her power started thriving. Everything fell into place when she stopped spending all her energy tamping it down. So I bought it. I, I think it's okay. believable. Oh, absolutely. I kind of saw that in like everyday reality. There are lots of people, myself included, who like tamp themselves down. Like, I don't want to be super special. I don't want to be this shining light. I want to hide in the shadows and just be that random person everybody sees and knows. Because, you know, she was the Mac person who wasn't very good at her job. Right. But she did it. She was just like, she would have been a secondary character in any other book because she was suppressing her own power. And then when she fully, like, let go of, there's nobody out there for me. There's nobody waiting for me. It's just me. Then she let go and embraced her power and it came out. Yeah, even after she kind of went with the Grishas, right off, she's trying to blend in. She's like, Mm -hmm. oh, I don't want that black. Give me blue. I don't want, you know, I don't want to stand out. I don't want. So she's always like, that's just something that she's developed. (laughs) She's held tight. You know, she held tight for a long time. That's a a defense mechanism. It's part of being an orphan. Yeah. Yeah. They were hiding at the orphanage always. It's part of being weak, actually. Right? Trying to blend in so that you don't get noticed and and singled out. Yep. Yeah. When she started to show her powers, I always thought that... that I did think that... What was the woman's name? Uh, Gosh, it starts with a B. (laughs) Bagra. Bagra? Bagra? I'm like, man, that woman is just the nastiest witch on the planet. But, you know, she was grilling her. She talked bad Mm -hmm. to her the whole nine. But I'm like... It worked. It helped her. And it's like later, she's like, oh, thank God that woman was so hard on me because and everybody that she trained with, even the other guy, thank God I ran all those miles and did all this stuff because, you know, she needed it later. So, yeah. Yeah, I think she definitely had a soft spot for her uh, physical trainer, especially after he slapped down Zoya for hurting her. (laughs) Oh, Zoya. (laughs) What a witch. (laughs) I'm like, you are so stupid. And then, like, as things come out, I'm like, you should be happy you don't have the Darkling's attention. You really should. Really, really <laughs> right? should. I wonder if she's going to come up again or if she's yeah. just kind of a throwaway character. I feel like uh, she'll probably show up again just because she has so much bitter anger inside of her. And I don't think she was there at the very end mm-hmm. yeah. in the fold. Yeah, they might have left her back at the little palace or the small palace or whatever. Yes, yeah, she, she she would have uh, jumped right in with uh, with the Darkling. She would not have, if she had the power, she would have been the evil queen right next to him, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. So in that regard, I feel like she will come back and maybe she'll get what she deserves. <laughs> not without, not <laughs> without making back. Alina miserable first. <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah, she'll try her hardest. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, so what you guys think about Mal though? Did you like him? Did you not like him or what? Like what did you guys think about him? Honestly, I'm kind of indifferent. Like I know it sounds weird and on paper he was a good guy and really sweet and like the perfect hero, but I just like He doesn't have eh. a ton of personality. Um, I th- I think that's going to come later. Yes. Yeah. I think this whole business of him being able to track anything and everything is um, obviously important, but I think it's going to get more important. I think when they, I expect the, the world building to take some kind of turn and to find out that some of these humans that are not Grisha have different powers, you know? Or they have a touch of it. Like, he kind of said that in the book, like, where Alina was kind of considering, you know, he's so good at tracking. Like, mm-hmm. is that really just him being good at it? Or maybe there's a little yeah. something there. Maybe he's just like her and he has the power, but he tamped it down so right. he could stay with that her. Could be. 
Yeah, I didn't really care for him at first. I'm like, he's such a brat. But, you know, I'm like, I have to remember they're essentially kids, but they're like, what, 17 or something like that? They're adults in their world. Yeah. And I'm like, but he's young. So, of course, you know, he's the young, hot guy. All the girls are drooling over him. And obviously he just doesn't. Oh, my gosh. Right. Mm -hmm. The very beginning. Yes. And uh, (laughs) Alina was very jealous. Oh, yeah. Very, very jealous. <laughs> but I mean, later when he showed up again, I was like, wow, he's so bratty. Like, I understand that you thought the girl might have been being tortured or, you know, something else. You thought all these bad things, but you did that. That was in your mind. And then you're going to get all mad when what you see isn't exactly what you envisioned. Get out of here. You act like a kid. Right? You should be happy that she's like, happy and powerful and doing all these great yeah. things, not pissed off because she's not being tortured. Yeah, right? <laughs> it's kind of like, um, what, are you, what, are you, what are you hoping for out of this scenario? <laughs> yeah, I think you right. I'd be like, I'm sorry, so you're mad that I'm not chained up and being, like, beat to death somewhere? That's what you're talking yeah, about right now? He's okay. a little cardboard, so maybe he'll get more personality as time goes on, but he's doing all the right things for the most part. So, um... Yeah. Yeah. Except he did not do. And another thing that shows him kind of is weak. Like, and I understand you can't kill the main <laughs> character in a trilogy, right? You just can't do it. <laughs> not in the first book. Yeah, not in the first book. But I'm like, dang it. She asked you to do one dang on thing uh, yeah. and you couldn't do it. I'm like, oh, but you know, what do you, yeah, yeah. but I knew he wouldn't that, because you that can't scene kill was her, so right? painful. So. Like, I don't know if we're ready to talk about that scene right now, but mm-hmm. that that was really a heartbreaking scene. Yeah, it was. <laughs> oh, boo-hoo. <laughs> but, you know, honestly, I did. I really liked so many things about this book. I liked that, you know, because this is, you know, YA fantasy, of course, we have all different names for things. We have a world of Gracia. And I liked that we delved into the world building. It was pretty solid, but there is more to go. There are more things Mm -hmm. we can learn. And this first book didn't bog us down with like all this history of it. And, you know, sometimes things get lost when you just go too deep, too fast. So I like that this, to me, I felt like it was a fair amount of history and the world building was pretty solid for the first book. What'd you guys think about that part of things? Oh, absolutely. I agree with you. Like she was going in and studying in the library and reading all these books on the theories. And we just got like tiny snippets of, oh, this person says this theory, but somebody else says something else. And that was it. Like we didn't have long (laughs) paragraphs going on and on and on about the history and who started what and all these different things. and. It, yeah, it that's really just gave us more a sense of her her confusion <laughs> than of of any real theory, I guess, right? Yes. yes. So that's what I got out of the research is that she's confused, not that she learned <laughs> much, right? <laughs> but it works. Yeah, I'd like to th- I'd like to think <laughs> that as she learns more about being Grisha herself, that we learn more along with her. Mm-hmm. You know, so we're not, we don't get everything front loaded. Well, and she's also kind of unique, right? There's not many sun summoners. And why is that, do we think? Oh, good question. I will bet you that the Darkling got rid of them all early on before he found out that he needed them to, to do the rest of the job. Because, because if there were, oh, probably. you know, because a sun summoner would be able to get through the fold, right? Presumably. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which is crazy to me. So you're going to create like this darkness that you can't even get through. Like you made this, but now you can't even go in there. Well, no, he could. It was, he didn't expect the Vols, Volcrov. I'm so sorry. Volcra. The Volcra. He didn't expect those things to be there. And so he can go into the fold and do whatever he needs to, but they come in and attack him. And the only thing that stops right. them is the light. So he needs the sun, su- the sun summoner. So he probably did get rid of all of them because he's like, I can control mm-hmm. the darkness. I don't need you. Yep. Like, you only stop me. And then the monsters came and he's all like, yep. oh shit, I do need you. 
So that makes me wonder if Bakra, like on purpose, didn't tell him of one of the side effects because she's very old as well. So she knew her son is crazy. So she, you know, when he did that, she didn't warn him of what could have happened. You know, what could be created. She just let him go because, you know, we don't know much about Bakra. She may have been all all on board back at the back in the yeah. day, right? It's been it's been at least a couple centuries. That's true. Yeah, maybe. Man, that old woman, she was very... <laughs> I knew something was up. Like, I knew that, you know, obviously she trained him, and you could tell, but their interaction with each other, like, he couldn't tell if he wanted to yeah. be respectful or just go off on her. Mm-hmm. She And she commented, on it. she commented on it, too, which I thought was a perceptive interaction, where it also helped us know that, okay, yeah. there's something... Something for real about this old woman. She has, Mm -hmm. uh, if the Darkling is all powerful, but she has some kind of um, authority over him, or at least the ability to make him like uncomfortable, (laughs) and and the will and the willingness to do it because nobody else will, right? Yeah, (laughs) certainly not the king or the queen. Now, I would have thought we'd see a little bit more of the king. That I, if we're going to overthrow him. I would have liked to see more of what he does, you know? He just seemed kind of decorative. Mm -hmm. It was just gross. I mean, there were hints (laughs) about that, but we didn't really see that he was a bad ruler, right? Yeah. Yeah, we just know he wanted these wars. I'm just saying that we don't know how much the Darkling is pulling the strings. We don't know how much hold the king had over the Darkling, if any. We know the Darkling felt like he had to be beholden to the king's authority and didn't like it. Um, but or was yeah. that an act? And he was actually pulling the strings the whole time. Right. We don't know. Because we didn't <laughs> be see. this quote-unquote young guy who's only yeah. like 120. Right. We didn't see the king do anything except maybe leer at Alina mm, a little bit mm-hmm. and p- yeah. probably misbehave with Jenya. Right. That was in- implied, but not, but not really stated. And then the apparat, yeah. like, I thought that was going to go somewhere. And then I was like, oh, he disappeared. I assume he's going to come back. Do we it's think like he's a good or bad? Character. Yeah. Huh? I said, do we think he's good or bad? <laughs> Don't know, which is, well, I mean, I think Alina has said out loud that she doesn't know. Like, she finds him super creepy, but he's also not necessarily a tool of the Darkling, right? No, he's definitely creepy, but who knows what he'll actually show himself as. I guess we'll figure it out next book. I mean, you'd think he's going to come in again anyway. I hope so, because otherwise I would call that poor, poor world building in the first book if he doesn't come back yeah. because there was so much it was so seated in there for something to happen and then for him to just oh he's here he's, he's warning her he's, he's on yeah. the throne and now he's gone like what <laughs> so, yeah yeah so I, I would assume he's going to come back in future books um, and probably be one of those wild cards that uh my prediction, if I can be Karnak the Great for a moment, is that uh, he and Alina can ally, temp- ally temporarily, but he's going to be like the mm-hmm. enemy of my enemy. Is my, the enemy of my enemy is my friend for a little while, but he's he's a wild card. He's unpredictable, and he might not get her where she wants to go. So do you think like when the Darkling, like let's say they, you know, pair up, right? And maybe they figure out a way to take out the Darkling. Maybe he's a bigger bad than the Darkling was and we just don't know it yet. I don't know if I'd call him a bigger bad, but like maybe just a bad ruler and he wants to rule in his own way. A religious a religious fanatic. Yeah. Yeah. And once they take the Darkling. I, I pre- yeah. I think in the second book, he'll come back and he'll help Alina get out from under the Darkling and make strides in the series arc. But I don't know if he'll last until the third book. Well, I mean, at this point in time, we know that Alina, as the series goes on, she's just going to get stronger and stronger. Because now she's like set up in the perfect spot 
to just take down everybody. I mean, honestly, I'm not sure. It's, I mean, outside of like the politics of it and, you know, sorting out that stuff. I mean, I'm pretty sure she can take anyone. I feel like like sh- that's how powerful she's going to be when the, when it's all said yeah. and done. Yeah, because she has yeah. the so, amplifier and she saved the stag's life because uh, so she has the power. Yeah. So I, I don't know if he knows how to control her power or not. You know, he mm-hmm. thought he was going to be able to do it with the amulet, and now that's not so true. So right now, his only hold over her is Mal, and that's only going to go so far, right? At some point, Mal's going to get away or <laughs> die. Yeah, which he doesn't have oh, right. anymore. Right. He doesn't right. have that anymore. Yeah, because she and Mal ran away. Right. So yeah, sorry. unless he captures Mal again. Sorry, my Kindle had like about eight chapters into the next book. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, um, you're right. In the end of this book, they get away. No, you <laughs> run ahead, boo. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. They totally do. <laughs> oh, well, dang. You know he gets him her, gets him again. Dang it. Sorry, but what did you think? <laughs> of course, it. he gets them again. He's a he's a he's Ugh. a big bad. He's it's a, been around for centuries. Yeah, yeah, so it's a pretty it's a pretty black and white good versus evil thing here. I mean, almost literally black and white situation here. So dark and light. Dark and light. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so yeah. Sorry. Wow. wow. Dang, Alina and Mal, y'all can't do nothing right. What's going on? <laughs> You're up against a really big bad. You're going to have to put, yeah. big, big, but, put on your adulting pants right now. So I, uh, I got to say, though, I kind of don't like that they, you know, kind of use that whole old man, old powerful man tries to pull the wool over innocent stupid girl and try to seduce her i'm like oh come on yeah it's definitely got a little bit of a little red riding hood uh feel to it doesn't it Mm -hmm. yeah i'm like she's such a fool like that one like after their uh that event where they kind of put their powers on display and they're in that room i'm like don't do it don't you effing do it i'm like do not do it you will regret this for the rest of your life so close she came so close did you guys have any doubts along the way that the darkling might not be such a terrible person yeah oh yeah i don't know i honestly i didn't know how i felt about him i did not want to believe that he was this just brooding prince charming kind of guy i didn't want to believe that but i didn't think he was that evil either yeah yeah I I, th- I thought I was ambivalent up until even when Bagra said, "Oh, it's he, it's it's not his grandfather. He's the one, and he's it's, it was him that did it, and he's that old." And oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. Sorry about that. Mm-hmm. Um, um, yeah. So even when Bagra said, you know, I was like, "Well, do we believe her? Do we believe him?" and I wasn't sure, you know, but then why would she do that? Mm-hmm. But we, I mean, Bagra wasn't particularly, how do I say, more believable than the Darkling, right? So, yeah, the only reason why I felt like instantly that she was yes. telling the truth, I did not question her story. Only because I'm like, well, she's not getting anything out of this. If she, if she leaves and runs, she's not getting any benefit from her leaving, right? Personally, if she stays, the darkling gets what he wants, you know. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I feel like oh, for her no. to lie to her about something like that and to risk being found out as a traitor or whatever, the reward there was no reward there. So she had to have been telling the truth. No, see, I had the opposite reaction to that scene. I was like, what is she doing? Why is she saying this? And this is like the Mm -hmm. perfect opportunity because Alina was upset and crying, like, because Al and the Darkling and everything, like, she was very emotional. And this woman just runs in, grabs her, shakes her, and says, you have to go now. And kind of drops a few truths and just, like, shoves it out the door. And she just runs. And I was all like, 
if I was a bad guy, Mm -hmm. if I was evil, that's what I would do. You get the person all emotional. You tell them a few truths mixed with a few lies. And then they do what you say. And they don't really question it because they think they're not thinking logically. They're thinking emotionally. I get that, Casey. But what is the benefit of her doing that? So let's say she gets her to run, which she did. Let's say she was lying and she got her to run. What does she gain from Alina Mm -hmm. leaving? Well, maybe she was actually the one who first Darkling doing who did it all before. Like maybe I assume she might have been like a real bad guy. Or maybe she's also a sun summoner. And now if Alina gets her power, she won't be the only one. I guess I just that just doesn't Mm -hmm. ring true for me. I mean, she was training her hard. Like if she wanted to take her down, I mean. I just, I don't know. I just don't, that didn't ring true for me. And when the old woman was talking, I'm yeah, like, oh, he's trying true. to get up on you and get you to believe all kind of dumb stuff. <laughs> you a dumb girl. You better run. That's what I thought. I guess I, I didn't think it all the way out. Like you're saying, well, why would she do this? She could do X, Y, Z or blah, blah. You know, it's while I'm reading it, I'm thinking, well, what would I do? I don't know who to trust. Why would we trust her instead of him? Okay, we're going to go with her story. Mm-hmm. All right, here we go. You know, <laughs> so. But then Alina started realizing, you're right. He did lie to yeah. me about this. I asked him about this specifically and he lied and that was something that she could quantify herself though some of it not all of it but some of it oh absolutely no it was more of like a who do you who's telling the truth who do you trust more like yes i don't know i just saw like these two higher players playing with a pawn is how that read to me what i thought was odd is that like did Bagra just figure out that night what his plan was? Why was it so... No, but that night, remember that night, that's when the soldiers came and said they found the herd. So he, oh, she didn't right. think that he would actually find the right, herd. Yeah. Right, right, so that's why she, yeah. Okay. True enough. Yeah. And I mean, honestly, I can kind of see that he was something that wasn't right. Like, the night of that you know demonstration she gets her you know attire and it's black i'm like dude she told you she wanted blue why would you force her to wear that black that annoyed me i'm like you know she's been wearing blue this whole time and you're gonna say here's this black one wear it and she gonna do it like oh prince charming brought me this black you know whatever no girl you dumb like you told him you wanted blue (laughs) he's gonna just ignore you and give you black so i'm like okay he already don't listen but he's is yeah. making a claim that that was definitely not a random mm-hmm. uh, just thing to poke at her with. He was no, uh, it's forget what you want. This is what I want. I'm claiming you. You're gonna wear this. We're gonna go claim. You know, take over the world, and you have nothing to say about it. <laughs> you know. Yeah. <laughs> so you hit him off the bat, like I just I don't know. Just he just did not ring true to me as oh you know because sometimes guys are like in these books they're just brooding but they're really good guys he just didn't come across that way to me i mean from the very beginning i knew that there would be a love interest there like because that's why that's what these stories do and i could kind of see the hints like when they were traveling to the castle and like she rode on the horse with him and they talked in the barn. And I was like, I see what you're setting up here. I know that this is going to be the love interest, mm-hmm. which was stupid because she already had Mal, who she was totally in love with, even though he was cardboard. Like I was like, it has to be the triangle. We have to have the triangle <laughs> because it's YA. Even though it was like a half ass uh, triangle, it wasn't really a triangle. Not really. Yes. Not really, but like, it felt like it was being forced in that direction. So I knew that was coming. So I was like, ugh. Yeah. Casey, I hope so he's funny. better than I was like, oh. like, But if he was a good guy, he would be a better choice than Mal. He's definitely hotter, I feel like. He's got the hot factor. So evil. Yeah. if only he wasn't like, guys evil. evil. This ruins it all. <laughs> <laughs> my soul dang and my it. Yeah. bits. I don't know. Uh, dang it. Ugh. I don't know. <laughs> we knew Zoya would choose evil over Mal. We just That's what she would do. Yeah. But like, but he's hot though. He's so cute. Like, are you sure he's evil? No, yeah. 
No, he is. And and Mal wasn't there. He was ignoring all our letters. Yeah. But she didn't get. Or so he claims. Yeah, he claims that he was always gone he away from the infantry. Had... Mm-hmm. But do you think that the Darkling was hiding her letters? Or, like, she'd send them off and he'd have somebody take them away so Mal never receives them at all? I thought that. I did think it. After we figured out all the way that he was bad, I mm-hmm. wondered if they ever even got in the quote-unquote mail. Yeah. you want That was my thought, too. You want spoiler from your book no i don't know i have no idea that was so (laughs) we'll talk about that next month (laughs) sorry i knew i shouldn't have read all that as soon as i figured out that it was like almost the whole book i stopped but I oh my god i can't believe you <laughs> did that oh that's so <laughs> kendall you messed up our stuff that's what happened but wait can we talk about this for one second total tangent reader tangent yes um my book stopped at 58 yes. percent that was like and the rest of it was you know, eight chapters of the next book and Q&A and all this other stuff. That's called stuffing. Uh, yeah. You're stuffing the book to make it look bigger. And that's technically illegal. I think. Yeah. And you shouldn't have to. Honestly, the hardcover yeah. says that it's 385 pages. That's what the hardcover says. So that's long enough. You don't have to fake the funk and make that book seem bigger than what it is. I don't think it's stuffing with exactly. evil purpose. I think it was, I mean... Not with evil purpose. Uh, no, no, no. I'm not saying yeah. like. So I don't. I, but whole big ordeal with all the indie people stuffing like ten books into one thing and making it a thousand pages so they can get paid yeah. That's more, more thing. Yeah, and that's not what I'm. That's more to thing with books. Kindle Unlimited, right? Where they're trying to get more pages. I don't. I yeah. Don't know. Um. I. I haven't really. The page. I haven't really stuff. followed the book stuffing scandal. I know it's a thing, but um. Um. Yeah, I know it's the thing, and I just saw that, and I was like, this is have- book stuffing, and I've never mm. seen a traditionally published book that's only, that's less than 60%. Like, that is extreme, though. That's a large percentage of other really, stuff. Well, the problem is that it throws mm-hmm. you off, because you make certain subconscious assumptions about where you are in the story arc when you see that you're at 25%, but if you're really at 80%, then it... it it's one of the downsides of reading electronically versus uh, a physical book, I think. Cause... Well, mm-hmm. it wouldn't surprise me if the technology is there and they just haven't done it to do this. I feel like this will prevent that. So let's say the main body of work, you go one to 100%, but everything after when you're done, you start over at 1% again for the additional content. They can do it. I'm pretty sure they can. They're just not, they're being lazy and don't want to chop it into two, two into one. Yeah. See, because heard- you know what I mean? So even if it was yeah. 60% of the entire file, as you got closer to the end of the book itself, you would be at 100%. Uh, yeah, because I was at 50% and I was all like, oh my God, there's so much more. And then two chapters later, exactly. it's done. Like, exactly. So I had to go. I thought I, I was know. I had to through. go back and like, like, thought- just take a deep breath and go back and read like the last three or four chapters, knowing <laughs> where the end was going to be. And like, is this an okay ending? Okay, I guess it's an okay ending. But I just thought there was going to be more, <laughs> so I wasn't prepared for it to end. It's a psychological Absolutely. trick. They made you jump in and read half the next it book. Totally was. <laughs> Actually, I was just didn't pay enough attention to the like. Am I reading a epilogue or am I reading another? I, I don't know. I'm so confused. But that's me. But mm. Mm. well, I gotta say, with the audiobook, we didn't have that problem. So, audiobook listeners, we're safe. We're safe. <laughs> and if you're gonna listen and you haven't listened, I definitely, you know, if you want to check out, I think the same narrator does the all three of these books. It's Lauren Fortang, Fort Gang. Excuse me, I said that wrong. Lauren Fort Gang. There we go. And she's really good. She did a really great job. I don't think I've listened to her before, but I really enjoyed her on audiobook and it really helped me out with some of these Russian words. So definitely give it a try on audio if you don't feel like dealing with that 58% deal. Or <laughs> the Russian words. It was, it was obnoxious. Yeah. Because I think they're going to probably do the same thing in the next book. You'll probably, don't be shocked if you have another bunch of stuff at yeah, the end of so the, the next thing to do e-book. is to 
open up the table of contents, go to the very end and look at what your number is and then, you know, know that. Mm -hmm. Before all the bonus content. And... Yeah. yeah. Mm. No, well, I don't find that at the end. It, it's okay. It, it, it uh, kerfuffled me a little bit. The end did wrap up really fast, I think. Mm -hmm. It kind of just was like, you know, one minute they're on that ski thing, you know, and the, the yeah, skiff. The yeah, the skiff. Yeah, thank you. And all of a sudden, they're like running, running. Oh, all of a sudden, they're gone. Then they're on the ship and they're gone. I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. I'm like that happened really quickly, seemed like. What did you guys think of Alina's escape and how she just like let everybody die? Uh, I, I didn't hate it. <clears throat> I didn't hate it either. I didn't hate it. Yeah. I didn't think it made her a bad person. I think everybody no. on that skiff was, uh, most everybody was in favor of what the Darkling was trying to do, other than the ambassadors. Mm -hmm. So that, that was uh, not their fault. But I don't see that she didn't have a choice. And no. they weren't good people there on the skiff, for the nope. most part. And she, uh, she asked for their help. She asked yes. them. Yes, that's what I yeah. mean when I say yes. that they were willing for it to happen. Yeah. So, oh well, made yeah. you made a bad choice. Now you got to deal with it. <laughs> oh yeah. That's awesome. Oh yeah. I think we should talk about the about that a little bit too. That there were a lot of people who felt like the Darkling was right. That being able to control or having that threat, like you could maybe think of it as nuclear. Uh, threat um, preserves the peace. Do we think mm. that's right? Like, yeah. Well, I don't think they realized, like, Alina even told, I think it was Ivan or something, she's mm -hmm. like, yeah, he does that, but then he's, you're gonna, you're just trading one master in for another one. Like, I don't mm -hmm. think they really realize that the Darkling actually intends to, like, be the new ruler. Like, I don't think they're thinking that far ahead. So, agreed. But here's the thing, and I, I don't think the Darkling is going to be a particularly benevolent, benevolent ruler. Um, but what would the world look like if he got his way, right? So he's proven that he can expand the fold. Presumably, he he won't because what do we think is going to happen? He's going to want tribute or taxes from everybody, and he's going to eliminate battles between the different people right so on the positive mm -hmm. side no more war right um all these soldiers that have been dying for a hundred years we're going to put a stop to that that's the that's the carrot he's holding out right yeah so um it and most people are, he's managed to convince his people that it, it would be better but you'll be in the dark all the time. In the dark. <laughs> no, you wouldn't you live know. in the fold. The fold is the threat. <laughs> threat he said he wants to expand it, though. The mother said... No, that's the he threat. Yeah, and he did expand it. Yeah, that so was he like, there. expanded it over the town and killed the all those town. people. Right. Yeah. So, But he doesn't want to kill everybody. He just wants to... If they stand against him, then he'll send the darkness and the monsters to get the people and kill everybody that way. Like you won't have to worry about the soul just going in and dying because the darkness is going to go in and kill everybody off. Yeah. To me, the end doesn't justify the means. I feel like um, that's unfortunate that those people sided with him. I mean, I think in the short term, yeah, they may be satisfied with it in the short term, but he seems like a much worse person than that. It's not going to be that and done. It's going to be that, then something no. else, and something more, and something more. It's going to turn into something that they were feel they were better off before. Oh, absolutely. They just see, like, oh, here's the carrot. Here's a better life. This is what we want. We're going to stick with you because, you know, we fought with you. We work with you. You seem like a nice guy. Everybody <laughs> likes you. All the women want to be with you. You're pretty, you're pretty hot. Sure. Therefore, yeah, you're, you're pretty hot. <laughs> you're hot. We like you. We'll follow you. Oh wait, you're I, evil. Oops. I see a pretty a pretty strong parallel between the um, the 
expanding the darkness and, and killing off uh, Nara Nubo Nishniki, the, the town there, uh, and, uh, <laughs> and um, Hiroshima in World War II. Mm. It did mm. end the war. Mm-hmm. A lot of people died. And the threat of nuclear war has sort of um, been the big ticket ever since to maintain world peace, right? That's the thing that, mm-hmm. that kind of, that's the, the big marker on the table. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> so you think like the Darkling is equivalent to like nuclear war? I think the fold is equivalent to the nuclear bomb, nuclear capability, yeah. Right, but he controls that. <laughs> so, the only so what one if, who can. What if we found a technology that could uh, uh, invalidate a nuclear threat? Sorry, mm. I don't want to get rid of that technology. Not, nothing to do with the series. Hmm? <laughs> I said that he'd want to get rid of that because he wants to stay in power. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, like I don't think we could book. get rid Sorry. of nuclear weapons. Like, <laughs> we could get rid of nuclear weapons. I think that that is why certain countries rebel. North Korea, mm-hmm. they're like, no. Um, other places, you know, they're, you're not going to take my weapons from me because right. then I lose power. So if we could yeah. get rid of it, people would be, well, some you know countries would be anti that. They would do everything in their power to hold on to it because they. But what wouldn't it, have anything. What if it was a defensive technology? Like we could put a, an umbrella over our city and nuclear war couldn't touch us. Oh, I don't know. People might, I don't know. I don't know. It'd be a good question. Cause I mean, I wouldn't hate it <laughs> if there was something protecting me, right? but would people be more apt to use it? Oh, if yeah. People, good thought. You know, I don't know. I don't know. Just kind of randomly going off. Sorry. I didn't mean to, totally derail the conversation <laughs> but but i did see that as a pretty strong parallel and there's been a lot of ethical discussion over whether it was or wasn't a uh, appropriate use of of force because it did end the war yeah it did mm-hmm. but i mean that kind of even <clears throat> if you think of it even on a smaller scale you know you had asked what do we think about elena letting those people die i mean i kind of feel like that's kind of like the same theory kind of like you know well i I can't save you you don't want to be saved so oh well you just oh well i mean right (laughs) it's like Mm -hmm. i don't know what what could she have done i agreed with her choices but i just thought it was really interesting because usually the heroes are like i have to save everybody yeah every single person must live i can never let anybody die and she's all like oh well let me just plunge you all in the darkness and let the monsters feast on you while I run away with my <laughs> yeah. wow. with my boyfriend in tow. And actually, and yeah. that's what kind of what makes me kind of like her a little bit because I don't I don't know if you guys if we've talked about this before, but I don't like those squeaky clean heroes. That seems so fake to me. That's not real. What's real is people have to make hard choices and they'll be yep. okay with those choices. You know, yeah. not everything is going to be pristine in the end. You can't save everybody and you don't need to save everybody because like you were saying earlier, she asked for those people's help and they said no. They sided with the Darkling. And she's all like, all right, well, you're going to (laughs) die. Yeah, it's kind of like just, uh, what do you call it? Um, I guess they're just collateral damage. That's what it is. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it was retaliatory. It was just like, well, I have to go. And uh it was you, a choice. And she to decide with this guy and uh, uh, bye, Felicia. Bye, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <'Cause> we're out. <laughs> That's how that is. I mean, she's the Maybe light. She could leave the light and take off. It goes with her. Yep. You know? So. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not going to stick around for that darkling to yank my chain again. <laughs> and try to get, no, get out of here. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> run, run, run. Yep. Oh my gosh, yeah. So this oh my gosh. So was there anything in the book that you guys think that you just especially didn't care for? No. Oh my gosh. <laughs> There's nothing I really hated. Like it was a good read start to finish. I think the only thing I really hated was that the ebook ended at fifty eight percent. I was like, I got another half a book to read. But 
Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I it, there's a lot I liked. I like that it started out with her in the army and got kind of a glimpse of the every man's life. Um, I thought the way they sort of gave a taste of what the the lowly people thought of the Grisha before she had to like go and join them was was good. I, I mm-hmm. if I had a complaint, I would say that Mal was a little bit flat as a hero. He doesn't have a ton of personality. Um. Yeah, I don't. I don't have a ton of complaints. I'm interested in in going forward. I don't know that I'd say. Well, we're not ready to rate yet, but, um, no. but yeah, it was a pretty. Great. You know, I think that <clears throat> Mal is one of those characters. Like, I think of him like. Um, Not that he's equivalent to this character by any means, because he's not. But my feeling about this character reminds me of how I felt about uh, Matthew from A Discovery of Witches. Like, in the first book, I was like, I don't know how I feel about him. And then it took, like, midway through the second book before I started really, like, liking him. Because he would start to show these different traits. And I feel like Mal is like that. Like, I don't really feel any kind of way about him. But I feel like by the time it's all said and done, I'm going to love him. <laughs> like, I feel it. Uh-huh. Like, it's going to come. Or something's going to click or change. And I'm like, oh my gosh, he's really, you know, this or that. Yeah. He's definitely a rock yeah. for her. You know, he um, he is there mm-hmm. for her. He chooses her um, consistently. And um, there are parts of the adventure that she would not have gotten through without him. So he's, it's just, he doesn't seem like he has a ton of personality. Yeah. Oh, I was just going to say he's the capital G good guy. Like that's who he is. That's his character role. Yeah. For now. For now. He'll get more in the next book. Yeah. Um, But what I was going to ask you guys was, you know, as we've been reading these adult books recently, did you guys miss the sex and stuff that it wasn't in this book? Did you miss it at all? Or were you like, I'm good with it. I, I don't <laughs> miss it as far as this is concerned. And yeah, we're good. I mean, I read a lot of YA, so I knew that there wasn't going to be any sex in it. And I'm really glad she did not have sex with the Darkling. <laughs> like, <laughs> go girl. You saved yourself a lot of trouble there. Mm-hmm. So. Um, I, I don't know. I, I like a great sex scene when it serves the story, and I don't see that it would yes. have served the story in any particular way. So I'm fine with it as is. Um, I I do kind of hope that like the fact that Alina's a virgin doesn't become a thing with the magic because that would be kind of icky. But um. oh, please don't, please oh, don't. No. I feel like she and Mal are gonna get busy like before this thing is done. I mean, oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Like their entire life has been foreplay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't. I'm not a big YA reader, so for the, the people listening to the podcast, um, you know, I I have I have kids, and like I get plenty of YA drama in my life that way. Mm. So, um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but this is but but you know we don't have go on quests and have magical powers in our house, so this is fun that in that respect. <laughs> But um, um, yeah. as far as the YA tropes and so forth, um, I, as long as the story's good, I don't care. Yeah, because I mean, honestly, in a lot of, not a lot, I won't say that, in some YA that I've read, it really doesn't feel like YA because there's like really sex and like a lot of like open door sex and other things that seem way too adult, even like when it comes to violence, like some of it's really, really, really bad. And it's like, I don't know how they just, they just call things YA if they're under the age of 17, 17 or under. And, you know, that's a whole nother thing I could get into, but I feel like this book kind of stayed within the lines of YA appropriately, which I was good with, but it didn't seem childlike also, which I especially liked. Yeah. It just seemed like a, a, I read these kind of books back in the day when they didn't have a genre called YA and like a lot of fantasy was similar to this because when people are uh, young adults, literally that's an exciting time to go out and sort of come into your personal power and to explore the world and to learn new things. That's a, it's a great time to have a fantastical event adventure. So to me, it seems very much in the just fantasy um straight fantasy genre. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. I guess because there's a touch of romance that, that they like to call it YA. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. The romance was there, but it wasn't like, <clears throat> it wasn't stage. overkill, you know? It's not center stage, yeah. but the thing is, it is her motivation, right? So you can't just kind of brush it off. It is the reason that she's resisting him in a lot of ways. Resisting the darkling? Yeah. I mean, okay. she's got her her moral compass, but her feelings for Mal are driving her in a lot of ways. It made her repress her powers. Mm-hmm. It made her right. join the army. It made her sickly because she was repressing her powers. Yeah, I don't know if that's necessarily a YA thing, though. Like, I feel like that's... I mean, almost every book that has a oh, romance absolutely. Thing, you know, it's they're all motivation is like, oh, what is this guy or girl going to think if I do X or B or what, you know, whatever. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, so, yeah, um, which I did like is that, you know, while her some of her choices did kind of come from that motivation, she really didn't do the whole mal or the darkling thing she didn't go there right. thank god right. thank god there was no dithering yeah yeah that's good so i um, would compare it for a second to a um a fantasy series that i like by uh, sm sterling and uh the the first trilogy there's a whole bunch of books but the first trilogy starts with uh, dies the fire and it's kind of a post-apocalyptic thing and it gets more supernatural as the books go on but um this is in that book there's it's earth but there's a apocalyptic event and over the course of the books the civilizations rebuild and romance is part of it but it's really more there's a lot there's a lot more to it that's about sort of alliance building and the there's feelings there, but sometimes they just ignore them because it doesn't work politically. And sometimes they, you know what I mean? And it, it's, it's mm-hmm. not the primary motivator for moving the plot along. And sometimes it's a little bit of conflict, but it's not, it's one of many things that drives the plot forward and drives a specific character forward. So um, I don't know if that's the difference between in some ways a traditional science, science fiction fantasy author, or in YA or or not, but it's just an interesting thing for me to to watch as a primary romance reader. Okay, what else? What <laughs> else, guys? I feel like we've come to like a little lull here. Do we have anything else we should talk about about this book, or should we go ahead and rate it? I mean, honestly, we've been going for fifty minutes. Yeah. Do you think we should? I think we've covered it. Yeah. All right. Awesome. So, who wants to go first with their rating? I'll do it. I will. <laughs> oh, I beat you, Casey. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> okay, That's good me. point. I win. Um, I'm going to give it a four. Um, I liked it. I, there was nothing I really didn't love about it, but um, it it, uh, it didn't quite make it into the five category of amazing and awesome for me. I'm the same. I gave it four stars for the same reasons. It was a good book, but it wasn't like the best book ever. Yeah, I think I sit right with you guys. I gave it a four as well. I think it's a solid start, though. I Agreed. think it's a great oh, yeah. off point, and things will go. I, hopefully, they improve with every you know next part of this story, but it just wasn't that overwhelming gushing of like, oh my goodness, this was the best thing I ever read. So yeah, I didn't get the five for that. So yep, but definitely Yay. looking forward to the rest of the next book. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, the rest of the next book. Sorry, which is, uh, Sorry ladies. <laughs> which is Siege and Storm. So I'm going to assume this has to be on the water, then. It takes place all on the water, probably, or mostly on the water, I'm guessing. Hmm. But don't tell think? me. If you think. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, that's it, guys. We are finished today. Uh, if you've read this book and would like to converse with us about this, you can find us on Twitter or you can join the new Facebook group. And all of the links will be in the show notes. Don't forget to use the hashtag three bloggers, one series. And we'll talk to you guys next month when we return and talk about Siege and Storm. Take care, everyone. Yay. Bye. If you enjoyed today's book chat episode and would like to show your support, there are a few things you can do. Head on over to Apple Podcasts and leave a positive five-star review. You can follow me on Twitter at Shelf Addiction. 
Most importantly, you can share this podcast with friends and family that enjoy all things bookish, including author interviews. Thank you for listening. And until next time, happy reading.